And we have Savan Bomar on the line with us. Good evening. And good evening. Uh, welcome, welcome. I was ranting. <laughs> you saved me from myself. I was about to walk off the edge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I definitely know how that can be. Let me just adjust my sound real quick here. Uh, as I no explain. problem. You sound good. You sound good. Okay, great. That's why I had to kind of come in and go out for a second because I noticed the mic wasn't registering. Um, yeah, I was yeah. having that. We had the same problem here too. We um, it's very difficult to connect these mixer mics and complex rigs together. You and I both like good sound. Yeah. And fortunately, we got to work through the technicalities of it. Welcome, welcome, brother. It's good to look you in the eye. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm alive and kicking for sure. I mean, yeah. no, it's going to definitely be um, an amazing show, but it, it's also really good. Mute button. Excuse me. Hit mute, mute button. button. It's also, it's <laughs> yeah, we got matching microphones anyway. Yeah, I think that's a Yeti. Both using the Yeti Blue. The Yeti, Yeti yeah. Blue. This is a standard <laughs> microphone of podcasters worldwide. Exactly. It works. You know, I, like I said, I dumped it for this one a while ago because it's just, you know, it, it it doesn't uh, pick up much background noise and it, it works out well. And then of course it comes to one of those real mixers so you can get some recordings, but you know, it is what it is. Like, uh, you know, I guess the whole big goal is to, is to be here and to be uh, really doing this yeah. and uh, delivering this message at this stage, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on just uh, mentally, spiritually, and physically. And, you know, we're also a rare breed. So it really gets to a point where, you know, we do need to release this information on a timely basis in order to, you know, just to preserve cohesion and to preserve, you know, what I, what I'm really seeing is you know, just direct, uh, somewhat opposition. You know, I, I generally, I'm never a big fan of highlighting opposition, but it's a battle over here. And it is uh, a battle. It is a battle, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I guess that's been going on for quite some time, you know, and it's just when you're really awake, you, you know, you just have to, you have to snap into it. Even like our great grandfathers, and, you know, they were aware of all of, uh, all this on another level. It was very simple to, <laughs> you know, when you take their land and you, and you, you just, you know, you, you, you do different things to them. They don't, you know, they don't need a complex explanation of what the hell is really going on, but there is, there sometimes needs to be a complex explanation on how the hell we're going to get out of it. Exactly. And you know what? <laughs> you, you read my mind because that's what I was going to ask you. Um, last hour, we talked with Duncan O'Finian, and we talked a little bit about the veil thinning and the dark side and the things that were coming through and the energies that were arcing and the blood moons and the equinox and the eclipses and all of the things that are moving through heaven and earth right now mm -hmm. as we kind of move into this period. So maybe now you can kind of ramp that up another level and tell us what's going on from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, and definitely getting to some solutions. Uh, is our runtime an hour? Yeah, it's, it's an hour. Okay, yeah, so let me, I did, a little bit over, just a little five, a little five, eight minutes. We're good, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Absolutely. I just want to kind of confirm that. That way I know, you know, exactly how to pace yeah. And really, you know, this is going to be the first part of, uh, I would say, I don't know how many sessions, maybe six to nine sessions of a, a series that I'm just going to call uh, Advanced Intelligence, because, uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to definitely need to speak. We need that. Yeah. Uh, in order to get the results that we're looking for. And then obviously, since we're coming out of the, coming out of Wonderland, where, you know, all the illusions and all the lies have been going on. And then now it's starting to become very clear what's happening. It's definitely become, um, for a lot of people, quite startling to wake up. And so, uh, and then at the, at the same time, even if you've been awake for a long time, you could have a great deal of knowledge and power and of information. But when you start looking at, you know, what it's going to equal when you start applying that power, uh, then it gets a little tricky. And even right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in a slightly tricky position because I'm aware of certain things. I have certain levels of information. And it's not like I'm running from my life. What I'm running from is joining something or something trying to silently allow me to join. And I'll, and I'll make that very clear. If you have a certain level of knowledge, you're like a teacher. But who are you teaching? You see what I mean? Like, are, are you teaching um, people from another secret society? Are, are you teaching society? Like, are, you know, what is, where is this knowledge app going to? And I'll explain to people that this is, this is how it works. When you see, okay, let's start, let's start like this. When you use four to 5% of your brain, okay? Okay, so I'm saying stay close to the mic. All right, so let me turn the gain up a little bit. 
There we go. So, okay. So when you see four to 5% of the reality, okay, or you use four to 5% of your brain, you're only going to see four to 5% of the reality. Okay. And I'll make this very simple so people can understand what I'm talking about today, because this is going to be a heavy message, but I have to transmit and that to let you know how certain things work. So what happens if I get in one of these three-dimensional vehicles like this, this uh, body, and I jump into one of these three-dimensional cars and I ride down the street, I'm going to see about 4% of the reality. I'm going to see all the dense stuff. I'm going to see the buildings. I'm going to see the traffic. I'm going to see all that kind of stuff. But if I go down that same street, per se, in my astral body, which is operating at at least 15 to 20%, maybe even more of my consciousness, I'm going to see now 20% of the reality. So when the guy that's only seeing 4% comes back and tells you what he saw, he says, I saw buildings. Same thing if they take off on one of these rockets, one of these 3D rockets with their 3D personalities, and they get on one of these 3D planets with these 3D cameras, they're going to see 3D. They're not going to see it, what's in the hyperdimensional spectrum, and it's because the beings that are really calibrated to do that are organic. OK, and this is like what I'm now calling techno organic because this or, or this technology that we're using here, it, it can't even be considered technology. The real technology, per se, is the body and how the body <coughs> soul is functioning to that kind of degree, because there's some pretty complex stuff going on inside of this being, especially when you start activating and, and tweaking certain things. Like you start tweaking some of the wiring going on in your brain and then oh, yeah. all of a sudden you can see another reality. All of a sudden you can play piano like Bach or, or Beethoven or uh, all of a sudden a lot of different things, even with just electric shock to the brain. So we're going to have to level out here and we're going to have to start to realize, let me see where my camera is here. Okay, great. We're going to level out here and start to realize that, okay, I'm in this experience. I'm going to need to figure this out. I'm going to need to do this before I get too old. Like, I'm not trying to lay here 70 years old in the bed with the same mind, and it's still harassing me about Exactly, trauma. exactly, yeah. You see what I mean? Especially yeah. if my vigor, you know, which is something that's based on gravity. Like, people have to understand that gravity is what's causing us to age. And so when you're finding gravity, this means that you would literally have to be in one of these high-end meditations every day to not be subjected to gravity. And I'll explain that very briefly. When you get into the meditations, you start getting the breathing and things going on, you start feeling the vehicle turning. It's light at first, basically for a novice meditator, but a master meditator, you, even if you lean back against it, you can feel your auric, excuse me, you can feel your auric field moving. And this is why when you see people praying sometimes, especially if they're deep and devout into the prayer, they start going like this. And this is because they have this field that's moving around them. So what happens is, is that when you speed that field up in the right direction, what happens is, is that your energy moves from the lower area of your body, like the navel down. It moves from there into the top part. It's just like stirring up something. You stir, 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 and then all of a sudden the top, you can start getting the top parts filled with the, uh, with the liquid or the liquid could come up to the top if you start stirring it fast enough. And so then when, when the energy is up there, when your primary consciousness is up there, you, you feel like you're in a cloud or something. You don't actually feel this weight of what it's like to be in a physical reality with all your energy down in the lower chakras. And it's easy for us to begin to see our body or this diagram as an hourglass. An hourglass is the most key visualization to understanding where we're at and how this really works. And, it's, and, and I'm just going to go right into this because it's going to take me a few times to transmit this for it to kind of catch on. So it's got to start somewhere. So yeah. it, it starts on off planet radio. So bring it on. What happened was, is that I just recently came off of with a few friends, uh, a, a period of shooting a documentary. Okay. So we took two weeks to shoot this documentary called diamond tree. And what this documentary was about was with the use of a specific substance, which basically rinse the veil right in front of your face if you can handle it what would be revealed okay and so in in my world i went in about 19 to 20 times on this substance and i'm back 
I'm still seven. I'm still logical. I still, you know, have a family. I, but I seen some stuff and I felt some stuff that ever since that point, I've been like red hot on the radar, meaning that I'm literally having to put everything I have into this just to stay above water daily with all the different bullshit attacks coming from all sorts of silly directions, anything that agitates me. And it was because I figured out a few couple things and I'm gonna explain the first one to you. The sun, as you know it, what you're seeing in the sky as the sun is not actually a sphere. It's a hole, okay? It's a hole. And when you, and that hole is synonymous with when you see an hourglass and there's that point in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. At that point in the middle, and then you go to the top, right? The granules have to go through that point, right? right. It's an so, aperture. It, it, aperture, okay? So that's, yeah. what the, that's what the sun is, okay? And on the other side of the sun is all of this energy that is spraying or it's really seeds it's, it's specific you can't even just call this stuff energy it is spraying a specific kind of template a specific kind of being okay and on top of that i don't even think that the sun is spraying what we call human beings here there is there is something else here that is beyond where we're at in these physical bodies but we can't see it with our eyes, okay? And this may be, again, the origins of what we're calling the soul. Along with the constellations, what the constellations are, are the same thing. They are more holes, but what's coming out of them is just like what they were doing with the telling you about the Zodiac and how, okay, this animal comes you, from- You just walked into something that I have been poking around the edges of, um, for last several weeks okay. and that i talked about a little bit before you came on tonight how we do not understand the nature of our reality cosmically earthwise what's on the planet in the planet above the planet so i just say that to go it's you're, you're locking into something here that i think is a, a meme right now that people some people the aware ones are starting to get for sure. And, and it's just like I was telling you, Randy, like when people look up at the sky at 4%, they're seeing 4% of the program. And that 4% creates a thought boundary for them. It creates a point where they can't conceive beyond a certain point. Because what all of these bodies are doing, these lights that we're seeing, is they're programming. They're programs. And the easiest way for me to explain is for people not to think about this as computers. Forget computers. Programs are running way before computers. Y'all to bail is a program. Archetypes yeah, are programs. Exactly. The leaders from the pantheism, they're all programs. Now, let me tell you what kind of programs. They are complex programs. Now, one of the themes of when we were going out into this, uh, on this adventure was to meet the four elements. Okay, so we pick four specific is here in Costa Rica that emanate fire, earth, wind, or water, okay? And through that experience, what it was really easy to see after a while is, first of all, the elements or the elementals are really the most difficult to work with. You need to be like a master magus or whatever to be able to deal with the elements. So what most people started doing is saying, okay, well, I don't want to just mix fire, earth, wind, water in these different variations to get this complexity that I'm looking for, this manifestation or projection that I'm looking for. I need something that's more put together already. So this is where the archetypes came in. Because what the archetypes were, and they were created by masters, okay? So this would be like a master builder can build an archetype. It can build an Osiris, okay? And then what happens with that kind of archetype is that it has, it has different kind of complexities. And I'll make this very simple to understand. I can explain every single, every single thing that's happening in this particular reality from three beings. Three beings. One of those beings is known as Leb. She's the mother goddess. She's Sophia. She's still in her dream. She's dreaming about all her badass kids and which one she's going to choose next to deal with all this dramatic situation that is going on because the whole damn thing is a drama. And so that's the internal world and it functions as such. 
That's Sophia in her dream. Now she has also all the knowledge about the world and all the wisdom that Solomon's bride, because this is still her dream. Everything is enveloped in her womb, okay? Then we have her son, who's Yalda Bale, the jackal, the joker, old zero one, the jester. I am God the king. So we're back to the archons. Well, the archons are subservient to, to y'all. Okay. They're, they're, okay. Sub, they're subservient running programs. The, these three archetypes are important because they pretty much sum up all the other archetypes. And then the final archetype in, in this situation, it would be either the extraterrestrial, which you can call the nomo. That's how you get, you, you know, you can sell the things that can't be explained through some kind of extraterrestrial contact. And then the final one that shouldn't be forgotten is Gaia's antithesis the actual physical version of Gaia, which is a feminine being also known as Ninhursag, Semiramis, uh, the Statue of Liberty, uh, Lady Justice, etc. This is a physical version of a being that does not live in physicality. So if you can imagine, Yalda Bale, who is the son of Sophia, has a wife. And this is where, you, because this Yalda Bayo character is only symbolic to externalization. So this becomes male. This is why you get the Pope, you get the papacy, you get this energy, this complex energy form anytime you want a piece of the pie. Listen to what I'm saying. See, the external force, which is known as masculine, wants a piece of the pie. It always has to say what it wants. Like the word abracadabra means that I say and then I create, okay? So this is, every time one is doing something like this, and I'm not saying it's bad or good, I'm saying if I, if I say I gotta use the restroom or I want this girlfriend, I want her to look like this, I'm taking a piece of the pie because I'm, I'm asking for something specific, not the whole thing. And so it's important to understand where all that would lead anyway. First, you would ask for small things until you realize you're getting scraps from the master's table. Then you would start asking for larger things. This would build up the degrees because the more you ask for, the more is expected, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. eventually, if you, if, it, if you completely succeeded going in that direction, you would end up being the king and how pitiful you would be just like if you go off into the other direction, extremely internalized to the point where you can live in the dream, you can even control the dreams, that mm -hmm. you would be so introspectively trapped within that, that, that desire of dreaming, just like Sophia, that you would actually be stuck there too. So the only thing that is available for us is to stand at the gate. We have to get to a point of realizing how to not be male or female, if you get where I'm coming from, basically to become either yeah. neutral or to, so you have two choices here. It's always like that. You either learn how to cancel out the program entirely or you learn how to play the game. And so do you see how tough these choices are? See, nobody said that this was going to be easy because this is tough. this is tough love. Yeah, this so, flies against... This flies against our normal preconceived conditioning, all of oh, our, oh my our goodness. Own programs. That's, this is why there's such a heavy meltdown right now, because this species is not even yet built to deal with something like this. Like the moment that you start seeing 15%, 15%, the person could begin to fall apart. I mean, literally, the body is coursing with so much physical energy. People have to understand this is a real thing here. Like, it's not, oh, I see something, Sister Betty. No, no, this is, if I touch something that's also electronic, I'm going to blow it out. If I, uh, um, <laughs> you see, the, the, if you look at the Dynamo exactly. Jack in Qigong videos, what happens is, is your yeah. body actually contains the energetic potential that corresponds yeah. to the spirit that you become. The Dynamo, the, uh, the capacitor. Yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. And this is why, and okay, so this is the best kept secret then. So as long as we're sitting down here on 7.8 hertz or whatever, and not vibrating at a high oscillation, then we're basically just, you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's like you're still flesh yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. or in, in a fleshly consciousness. Now, mm -hmm. to speed up the flesh, this is where, again, it gets a little bit more interesting. So let, let's keep going with this. So just to understand that the, what the sun is, 
is it's a whole. Now, the other thing is, is that how these work is that the sun and the moon is that they're receptacles, okay? They're receptacles. The sun is the receptacle for positivity or the future. Mm -hmm. And the moon is an archive and a receptacle for negativity or the past. And here's why. When you're in, uh, let's say, for instance, you start doing something so repetitiously, you can't even recall when you did it and what day it was, et cetera, unless something major happens. So let's say, let's take partying, for instance. You start partying a lot. Yeah. And then somebody comes and asks you, hey, did you go out last Friday? Where'd you go? And you're like, yeah, I went out. But man, tell you, truth, I don't even know. I don't even know. I guess. Last weekend. Exactly. Except for if this beautiful woman walked in yeah. or there was a fight. So yeah. meaning that something needed the two male polarities, right? right. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, so something had to spike for you right. to have that memory. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was at, Oh yeah. I was at uh, shady Joe's cause this girl walked in, man. And she was, yeah, I was out last Friday. So you have this reference point, right? So mm -hmm. that reference point becomes the archive or the receptacle or your, for you, to be able to reflect on the experience that went on on Friday. So see, the sun and the moon are always that. They're like the big ones in the room. Every time we do something in the daytime, in the positive side of the cycle, the sun records it. You see what I mean? But it, mm -hmm. records, it, it, it records the future. And the interesting part about this is it's hard to understand in a certain sense because we see future as in head and we see past as backwards. But right. really what I'm saying is, is that this thing becomes a space that you can go to in order to peer into a future that's on like a timeline, though. It's not like a future like it hasn't happened yet. It's a future that the same thing that always happens in the future always happens. And if you can go through the sun, you can actually see it. Why the past, you have to go through the moon. And now here's the interesting thing about the moon and why it's always surrounded by darkness naturally. And it's because most of the things that we did that were on more of the negative side of the character was done at night. And who was present for that was the moon. And it records that. So that's why at nighttime, we can often get into these different phases where we're like starting to pull up a lot of the old past and negative mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like night laying at night in the bed with yourself. It's all dark. Yeah. You start thinking of it, but then the sun rises and comes again. See what I was able to do is why the third eye was open. I saw it all like as clear as day, the time that's betwixt, which is about three 30 to four o'clock in the morning. The witching hour. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they, they say that's 12, but it's really more around there. Mm -hmm. And it's because the night loses hold to the day. But if when you're hyper sentient, you see them both as programs. You see them being, you see the mind literally shift into another frequency and then start to wake itself up. Now, here's the interesting thing. Like, I, I don't want people to see positive and negative as good or bad. I want them to see it as two different states. Yeah. Because what I also witnessed was this, this frequency, this hive functions more like, I think, the, the, the thing Azazel from The Fallen, the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington. This is how it works. It's five five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, this new program comes in. The guy's laying in his bed. He's not even awake yet. But then all of a sudden, a whisper comes into his mind. And it says, mm, you better get up. Shoot, you're going to need to start fi finish fixing the other side of the house if you expect to get it done in enough time so you can go ahead and be able to get that second mortgage. Then this other part of the mind comes in and says, yeah, man, but it's 6 o'clock in the morning. If we fall on this early in the morning, the neighbors are going to flip other side of the brain comes in they are not paying my bills so he gets up he turns on the bandsaw and starts cutting the wood then the neighbor it hits him what the hell i can't believe is he running that in the early in the morning honey wake up i'm already up i hear it too you need to go over there and talk to him but what about the his wife i thought you liked her yeah but maybe i mean you see 
So this is what the program brings. It actually, if you can't guard your mind, and this is why they were saying blinded by the light, which is what the sun is doing, bringing all this, what it wants to be the future. And then what it wants to be the past. And then us here, okay? And until we start seeing these things as separate things vying for our attention, we can never get into ourselves. And then we become dependent, just like it. I mean, all this stuff is very clear. It's happening in real time. There's no spookiness about it. But then we'll become dependent on it. We'll think we need a sun to have light. Wow, when you get on any real thing that turns on the corpus callosum, when you close your eyes, it's bright. Yeah. So proving there's some kind of inner light, right? Or we need this moon. Oh, it's it's got it's all of our crops and it's all of our vegetation. <laughs> when uh, last time I checked, the crops and the vegetation were really coming from us. You see, so this becomes very tricky here about how this whole thing is structured in this collective projection that we're all sharing in, because the, the reality is what we're taking is we're taking scraps. And that's what this thing is about today, because when you're in, in, into advanced intelligence, you realize what's being offered so far is not even really up to part of what you really are as a being. So let me give you a couple more secrets. Now, that mathematical compass, okay, that's the one that, that has the thing on the tip and the two things on the side. You open it up and you put the pin that you put the pointy part down and you press it down on the paper and then you can draw a perfect circle, okay? Now, that is a man. That's the template of man. Mm -hmm. That's why it looks like that, okay? Yeah. And the reason why it looks like that is because it's actually what the body is, is built to do. It can encompass the stars it can mm -hmm. calculate the parallaxes it can do things that basically equate to it being a time traveler so the bodies that we're in now minus a few upgrades that were originally there is a time traveling vehicle so and we do it every night but the short circuit in it is that it will time travel and then come back into the same reality that it was before. It won't completely time travel and make that complete jump. Okay, so this is like at night, you're a time traveler. And then back in the morning, you're like a tree. You can't really go nowhere. You're stuck in the earth. You're stuck on this reality. At night, you can go pretty much anywhere you want to go. But then in the morning, something tethers you back in and then you have to be. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're, we're locked into 3D. We still think we're, like you were saying, we need the sun, we need the moon, we need this. We need all of this physicality because we don't recognize ourselves. And I'm just summarizing here that we are the generators of all of this. This exactly. matrix that's locked us into 3D is the thing that keeps us bolted down to the ground. Exactly, because we're not using our powers Right. We're using something external. And, and I'll make it very simple also because it was written here on the list. It's uh, it's the metaphor is Oannes. OK. OK. Because Oannes was known yeah. to be a fish man. OK. But mm -hmm. really having a fish body and then a man body. And this is organic tech. OK. And it's because if you understand the story as it keeps going back, it was because the people were on an island. And it was prime to be a fish man because you could be on the land and you can be also in the water. Now, today, when we know it's in our benefit to be on land and water, we go get on one of these wetsuits, we get on this aqua lung, we put on this mask and we jump in there because we're using bad tech. Back in the day, you would just shape shift into what you want and what you need to be in order to endure. And this is important for to understand this is the key point maybe of the of, of the whole in conversation the only way that you can really survive is to adapt adapting is shape shifting so as a metaphor if you're living in a place that you need to be on land and you need to be in the water you actually have to transform yourself into a fish man now back in the day they could do it with a thought 
decompose and recompose the physical of what we're calling flesh. This is why the alchemists, they work with the prima materia, meaning that it wasn't about changing things external. It was about changing oneself. Physician, heal thyself. See, because if you can do a bunch of things external, it doesn't matter if you can't do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. If somebody is over, if you can talk the good gab and you got all this knowledge, but then your mom's sick and you can't do anything about that, you haven't kept into real knowledge yet. What you've done is you've reached a thought boundary. And this is another thing that people need to start realizing. What a thought boundary is, is that they, they program, for instance, and I'll just use the term they, all the limitations in the reality by giving you the extents. God, devil, anything in between, those are your boundaries. Okay? But when you cease to believe in any of that or even think that it's even important and you start canceling out all those programs, see, that's when things get shaky. Because now what you're doing is you're destroying all the foundation that everyone is not only standing on, but also what they're stuck on. It's like the same thing. When you create a point for yourself to be at home, you can see it as you're either there and enjoying it, and that's the illusion of it, or you're actually stuck because you can't get to another space. So it's, this, is, this is the real time now is what I'm saying. For those who are ready to make this real progression, you, this is the level of, uh, uh, of knowledge that you're going to need. But the application is also here. But understanding, if there's anything true here, it'll be where you're going. There's nothing that you're leaving. See, a lot of people are already at the brink. They can even start to almost come out of the body and shit. If, quite frankly, we're all going to have an out-of-body experience at some point. <laughs> they call it death. Okay? But when right. that occurs... Do we know how to control the next vehicle that's going to take us to where we want to go beyond the thought boundary of the 4%, beyond the, the, you know, the months of the year, the, the, the days of the week, and the whole good and the bad and all of this stuff? Do we have the power to project something that's beyond that? Because if we don't, and here's the other thing, then why wouldn't we just come back here? Like if, if there's if you can't think beyond this, how can you go beyond this? And this is where the challenge is coming for us now. And I've seen this stuff, like I said, as clear as day. I'm not here. Oh, this is what I read in a book. This is why my knowledge is different than what people are talking about and what they're writing down, because I'm not reading it from someone. I have to go out there and I have to find it out myself. And on top of that, I have to go into those frequencies so I can see, is there a way out of here? And this is one I'm going to tell you that I saw. In cymatics, okay, cymatics are when you play sound, it makes a shape, okay? The more complex the sound, the more complex the shape. Mm -hmm. Each of these shapes lay over things like webs. And in each of these webs, there's worlds. So what you, what you can see when you go into the higher frequencies, you see multiple nests. That's the easiest way to explain it, nests. Nests of frequencies, some complex and some simple, all operating on the same blueprint, but separated in different spaces and time based on, the, based on their spectrum of energy. And then when you start to be able to phase and change your frequencies, you can not only get into different spaces. Now, the reason why you would want to do this is because you, you can actually move to the past or move to the future to move around certain things that you've done. Okay, and I'm going to get to some keys here. The reason why this is important is because if you break your leg, don't you wish you could rewind like five minutes before you break your leg? And then... <laughs> not break your leg you see mm -hmm. now remember there's things that have happened for thousands of years that you need to kind of undo so this is the purpose of being able to move through time and remember when i'm talking about this it opens up a portal to it that's when i figured out how this works you can bend the thought boundaries by someone just starting to talk about it and then if the person starts to hear it, they create, a, they create 
a tunnel to it. And I'm, I'm going to explain to you how this works. It's so strange. Something like the pyramids, okay? The reason why nobody can really tell you when they got here is they work like the same way Barack Obama got here. They appear, and then someone says, where did that come from? And then the other person says, well, those always been here. And then someone says, but who built them? And then someone has a story of who built them, but doesn't know whether that story is true or not. Why? In a hive, any kind of over arc, meaning a being that knows how to mess with the program, when they create something, it's sheer creation puts another program in everyone's mind telling them where it came from. You didn't know Barack Obama before he came in office. <clears throat> Nobody knew where he came from. But then all of a sudden, he's got this long history of being in Chicago, and then he was in Hawaii. And this all of a sudden just started coming across. And people need to start being aware of this kind of thing. When you're a stickler for detail, you already know. You've seen the pictures. They're undeniable. He looks like Akhenaten, and the wife looks like the wife. And it's because how things can move around. All of a sudden, there could be a shard in the sky. And all of the sleepers will say, you'll be like, yo, what is that? And then people will be like, well, that's already been there. And then, but who built it? And then they'll give you some story. But these, this, these are what are called insertions. This is how your, the mind is actually being played with because it's very similar to a program. The moment that I install a program, let's say I install the pyramids, there is a string of code for that. So if I want to go look at the code, the code is going to tell me where it came from. So that's how our consciousness works. When we see something, we go, I think, Randy, you may have, you may have your mute on. We, we go. <laughs> saying was, yeah, what I was saying was that's going back to source code. You, you code, you know that. You go back to your source code. Exactly. It's the source code. And so when something pops up, and, and people need to, and, and again, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this very simple. Nothing comes from nowhere. It all has to be put in somehow. It just doesn't, it's no poof. There's either cymatics, frequencies, wavelengths, all those kind of things have to be mixed up together and then they, they're put out there. So there's a whole, there's a whole uh, string of things is what I'm saying. There's something tangible there. And it's that that we access to attempt to confirm truth. But in reality, what is truth? <laughs> Like people need, what is truth? What we see, what we don't see, what we believe. You see, like this, these words, they don't start to explain at all really anything when we look at them very closely. So let's, let's keep going here. And let's talk about, as we went over just recently, withstanding the future. Now, remember what I'm telling you. You can remodify yourself, your spirit, to endure so that you don't become extinct. Okay, that's one of your main keys is that the universe is always moving, shit's always happening, there's always a cosmic wind blowing. Right. Before you took a, a stop off on this hotel, at this hotel called Earth, you were on the cosmic highway. And that's why they always say, hey, there's a highway running by here. And this is why the old Orion and the Draconian, they give you this whole story. They really want this place. And that's why yeah. so many people get trapped here is because it's on a highway. Mm -hmm. Now, generally, you would take this compass body. Even in Spanish, the compass is called a, bruja, a brujan, basically the cognate of which to show you oh, how, they've, how they've demonized yeah. the whole idea of traveling to the stars. I mean, the whole thing is all mixed up. You can't trust anyone as far as their information if they're pulling it from another source. This is what we're calling realization. They've realized something based on another lie and then made truth out of it. The truth is, is that we're time travelers when you get caught in a nest, though, it's like somebody has put a, a net in the ocean that you're traveling to. So remember, as, yeah. this, as this cosmic being, you fly around from constellation to constellation. And oh, my goodness, at 100 percent, there's always something to do. Okay, Until you come by one of these areas in the constellation where you got the Plutonians, you got a couple Saturnalians, you got some Luciferians. And you got see some Venusians and even some Martians, and they got another plan. 
meaning they have a, a they have something that they're running to just like we all you know you leave out of your house you go to work you get your money you bring it back you build your home see so we're not the only mm-hmm. beings here that have something to fucking do excuse my language so right, what i'm right. saying is people have to understand that there are other beings out here now what what i realized was though is this is where where it got a little shaky for me is once I realized what my mind and body and soul when working together were capable of doing, that's when I realized, oh, damn, we may be a little out of our league. Why? Not because we're not powerful enough, but because we don't know anything about our power. And this becomes very challenging. Because think about it. If you have all of this power and you witness it, see, if you don't have it and you never know you have it, no harm, no foul, ignorance is bliss. Okay, but once you start tapping into it and you know you have it, then instead of jumping for joy, you reverse engineer the whole thing and say, oh, damn, if I can reach this level of sentience, how many other life forms are here that have reached this level of sentience? Let us do a quick scan. What kind of knowledge do you have in your reality and what kind of machines do you have in your reality? Okay. Well, we have a CERN, we have a Hedron Collider. We have a couple crafts. We have the, basically just the knowledge of implosion and breaking into the atom, and we breached into nanoparticles. Okay, so this means that there's someone here who not only has discovered that already, but is now in full manufacturing of it, okay? So this means that we're on the planet then with some beings that are at least at 30 40%. <laughs> And this is what I mean by when you when you when you start thinking about that, but you have to see it in yourself first. This is why these processes are necessary, because you start instead of getting, like I said, cocky with it, like, oh, my goodness, I'm all powerful. You actually realize but I don't even know what to do with this, because what I was witnessing was, first of all, once you move the energy from the lower triangle into the higher triangle, really their cones. At that point, you don't use conversation. In fact, the only way that you could have got up into the higher triangle is you're not using words, which are a part of the lower mind. You are using your imagination. Okay. So if there's anything that's been stolen, then ever since we were a kid, what were we trying to protect the most? Our imagination. It was fertile then. Remember the dreams? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You could still go back to some of those dreams. They were so ripe. But what happens is, is that when the imagination gets stolen, especially by the Disney, and then the imagination becomes all terrestrial. That's why they use they use animals a lot, right? And then the whole Disney there's always a there's a fat, there's a pig, there's a goofy, there's a but they're all animals. And this in the zodiac is all animals, and it's right. that's how right. you lower the consciousness into that vibratory frequency. Okay, and so. This is what I'm talking about is, uh, and let me glance at the time here. I think we got about 10 more minutes left. And remember, this is a transmission over a few shows because I've only got through about 5% of what I had to present. But I want to sum it up by saying that, again, it's your- Well, you actually, actually, you have another half hour. Oh, I do. Okay, okay. So you let do, me, you do. Let me drill into yep. a little bit further about the energy and the imagination, okay? So what I witnessed once in the higher cone is that when you thought that you were a son, you start feeling the energy. And the energy got so high, it threw pulses, right? You pulsed. Right. But then it hit something. And this is what I found interesting. It hit something at a certain point, and then it reverberated back. And then I realized, okay, so that's what the aura also is. It's a containment unit to keep you from, because if you pulsed high, and there was no containment unit, you probably would cause an earthquake, kill the person next to you, and a few other things. And so this is why it's so difficult to bring higher triangle powers into the lower triangle, right? And I, and I saw even how this works, so I'm gonna give you some of the keys here. First of all, I've read all the doctrines and the traditions. I'm at 12,000 books right now, so I don't, I don't think anyone can come neck and neck with what I understand about this. Okay, but in the Arabic text, they have a specific scripture and it says, Udubin Lahi Menele Shaitan Rajin. 
And what it says is basically, God, protect me from the whispers of Shaitan. So this time, I got a chance to see and really hear more than anything, and then also feel who this Shaitan really is. And what I did was, is I just gave it another name, and I call it the Whisperer. See, before you even, when you started talking to yourself, okay, and this was a long time ago, was the first time this voice started talking to you. So that way, after 10 or 15, 20, 30, 40 years, you can't even tell the difference between this thing's voice and your voice. Not to mention there's right. a few right. other sub programs running, but this one exactly but this yeah. one's the prime because and echoes and reverb that's coming <laughs> off of all of that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always and it's always got some specific it always comes in with division. So this is how this is how I saw it, right? So at that three thirty, four o'clock in the morning that I was telling you, I had the trap set up. Okay. I mean, and my mind was so clear and I, I was I was feeling the program attempt to worm its way into my aura. You see, so mm -hmm. to basically just try to stay blank in a certain tense, unmovable is hard. And I realized why our talking, hear what I'm saying, our talking for the whisperer is breathing for the whisperer. So if you don't talk, and I'm talking about in your mind, it can't breathe. So it's like it's holding its breath. So it's trying to do anything that it can to get you to talk. And many people experience this in the meditation. They get this thing, and it depends on how far you progress. If it's just beginning for you, it's like still, shit, I can't believe I dropped the trash this morning. I got to clean all that stuff up when I'm getting home. And you're just trying to get a clear state of mind. If you progress yeah. a little bit further, then it's saying, uh, hey, do you are you going to be on time later on for that meeting? <laughs> but if you progress a little bit further, it's going to say, hey, are we supposed to not be talking while you're meditating? <laughs> and if you progress a little bit further, it's just going to be there and you're going to feel it trying to worm into your consciousness. And here's why. When you shut up, you literally stop up all of the holes that all the energy is coming in and out of you. It's not just coming out of you. It's also coming in. People need to understand that, too. It's not, we're not talking about evil or good here. We're talking about if you shut up for a minute. In, in oh no it's chatter it doesn't have an it, it's back and forth it's it's, it's almost like babble it's not yeah, really it, focused exactly or it, it, it can take quite a malevolent connotation where it's literally yeah. telling yeah. you that hey this person you well, need it to wants to fuck up your meditation exactly. basically <laughs> it's what on, it's doing. On, on an every moment basis i know so i've been there was, so what happened was is that when this thing ran across it was like i had pain on the floor mm. and once it got the pain on it then i could see it so now no longer can it ever talk to me but it was very clear to me how it was talking to everyone else and in fact the moment that it can't talk to you anymore it wants to talk through other people. And this becomes weird because what, what I realized is that where does this come from? This is a part of the primordial state of consciousness. This is where that old king really resides. This is where the dweller actually lives. It lives in our consciousness. This is why they were saying it's an eidolon. It's going to be the toughest trial for man ever because it doesn't exist like a physical being like the dragon used to. So you can just go and slay that or whatever external creature you think is the problem. You can go and slay that externally. No, mm -hmm. no. this one's in the mind. And it's so, and it's not you. Here's the other thing: like people need to realize that this being is a very complex thought form, and it resides within so many states of consciousness, and it will not let you out, out the bottom of the triangle. Listen to what I'm saying. This is the being that's on the top of the lower triangle. Okay, and this is why it can claim, and this it's the Lord of all the Masons. All the people who practice the occult, they are in league with that being because it is that being that told them about what they know and told them, hey, you need to get ahead. Look, you're here on your own and you know you got these group of brothers with you. You need to do whatever you can for you and your family. See, that's the whisperer. 
should not underestimate this thing because it's quite crafty. It is the king of the craft. And remember, its whole job is to never let a person out of the bottom pyramid. So what happens is first you've got to build up enough energy to even get the old consciousness out of the bottom area. And then while you're doing that, you have to be able to shut the mind off into the point where the energy goes up into the top half. And then you start using your imagination to be communicated. And then the last piece here is, and this is the whole key to manifestation, once you get the imagination going and it starts, I mean, you can see this stuff as clear as day. Like I'm going to reveal a little bit more about how to get into these stages because quite frankly, brother, some shit's broke, meaning that our consciousness doesn't get onto the level that it needs to get because the firing, the synopsis between our uh, neurons or whatever they call it, it's yeah. not firing properly. Yeah. Right, exactly. Doing, like I just saw, I saw a documentary just today. They were talking about how they're trying, they're thinking about now using ketamine as a uh, as an antidepressant and as an actual legal drug to treat people with depression. And this is because ketamine, unlike many of the other antidepressant drugs, where they just fire serotonin, and melatonin, just like MDMA, MDMA into your spine and then give you the euphoric feeling of feeling okay until you run out of that stuff, which happens quite fast, and then you go into depression. What this does is it just simply increases the synopsis within a per certain part of the, glu I think they call them the glucides or something like that in the brain. So what they're saying is, and when you even see this stuff, you know, my friend, that there is something that can just be taken and then all of it turns on right then. And then here's what I learned from my, not only my own experience, but also what McKenna was talking about. Once you do it for like two months, it doesn't turn off. So you don't actually need the substance anymore. You see, look how they have us. You can't use this. You can't smoke on this substance. You can't do that. You're stuck in the reality. You don't have enough power or energy to right. get above the speed of light. You're in a vortex inside of actually something and then uh, that's even anchored down. And then we're supposed to deal with this. And this is why I'm saying, like for me, man, just understand this, Randy, because I'm on the phone with you tonight. For me, I'm, they're not gonna win. Meaning I still have to figure out my way into the universe and into the universe. And there's nothing that is, what, however it's designed is to, to take me out, to kill me is to only make me stronger, to imprison me is only to give me time to meditate. But I'm going exactly. to keep pushing yep. and pushing this until either everyone knows what the heck is going on or I'm promptly removed from the reality. And that's how this is going to work. But let me tell you, I've, been, I've still been the person where I can sit in a business meeting. I can sit there and talk about the most complex topics that have nothing to do with spirituality and be completely cohesive there. So I want people to understand that it's not that I failed in the world that I've ran the spirituality to trying to find some sanction. Quite the contrary. I had succeeded in this world and realized that it was no real accolade. And on top of that, I've now proved that, yeah, we are getting scraps from the master's table because we don't even understand our real power. And that higher mind and how to access it is what I've been talking about today. You dump the whisperer, okay? But let me show you what happens to these, these occult people. See, what happens is, is that when they get face to face with the whisperer, they can choose to become the whisperer. They can choose to become that eye on the top of the pyramid. And this is why it becomes so enticing, because they can still rule over everything in the lower world, but they can't get to the higher triangle. So that's why the last phase is the most dangerous phase, because this is what the Jesus in the garden of Gusamane was really about. You see, Satan's like, hey, wait, I give it all to you. If you want it all, because how many people actually get to that point? One one percent of one percent. So let me show you how this whisperer works. The one percent of the one percent actually can hold the energetic potential or the degree that is necessary for quote unquote Lucifer to incarnate itself. You see? Okay, so let me let you understand this. See, what we are outside of the bodies, we have immense power. So these disincarnates also already have immense power. They just can't get into the bodies. 
if they try to get into a body, they drive it crazy because their energetic potential is too high. So they're forced to share themselves across three, four hundred thousand, even one million, like with the Jesus, which is constant in Eidolon. He can share himself across millions of people, but he can never put himself into one person. So he can't incarnate. So the new uh, knowledge that's coming through is saying, man, they've been trying to get themselves in a condition, people in condition, or certain people in condition in the physical bodies to be able to harness an entity. Okay. But think about what you're talking about. You see, this is sort of like an avatar type situation. Exactly. It's where the body can't handle the energetic of the entity that wants to. Got it. Exactly. And so then, if the body is prepared, okay then it, there's a potential. And this is why now, here's, here's how tricky it is. You actually have to be able to hold the higher current to get yourself out of this. But when you what, what you run the risk of is when you're holding the higher current is someone trying to hijack your field. You see what I'm getting, you yeah. see what I'm getting to yeah, here? This is what I was saying. It's a sticky situation because you're like 1% of 1%. But, but here's what I'm saying, though. When you get out into the higher triangle, though, okay, there's a lot of us there. So here's the thing. Like, don't believe that the 1% of the 1% is special. It's special in the lower pyramids. But once you get up through there, there's only 1% 1 of 1 percenters. You see what I mean? You actually get into a world with people more like you. <laughs> You see, so there is some incentive here, but there's also some common sense to how this works. So and let me go on here. So what happens here then is that now the Joker, okay, this, this card is trapped between two worlds, okay? This is generally where a lot of people start the zero card, right? But it's not just a zero card, it's a zero and a one, okay? It's a curve and it's a straight line. And this is what we are. We're a Sophia and we're a Yada Bayo. We're a male and we're a female. We're a positive and we're a negative. So what happens with this is, is that you have to figure out how to love them equally in order to leave the egg. Okay? Here's how I figured out how to do it. Stay busy. See, it's true. The idle mind is the devil's workshop. That's where the whisperer enters. So if you're not, like, busy doing something, working on something, you're trying to pierce and quasars in order to calculate the parallax if you're not constantly in your own thing like what are you doing what is your imagination saying for that you need to be doing then what happens is is you fall into this relapse of trying to judge something <laughs> oh man that okay. lucifer i can't believe out of 14 million angels he was the most perfect and they smacked that moldavite right out of his crown and it fell into the abyss and nobody knows yeah. Said, yeah. Now you're back in the game, right? But mm -hmm. here's also what's interesting. I'm not telling people that you're just going to be able to walk out of the game. All I'm telling you is that teach was an anagram for cheat, <laughs> meaning that in this game, it is a fucking game. And if you don't learn your way around this game, it's very, it is a chessboard. Mm -hmm. so yeah, absolutely. It's the grand chessboard. It's the grand chessboard. That's so Brzezinski so once called it. Yes. Exactly. So if one doesn't understand how to change their pawn into a queen, <laughs> to not sacrifice their pieces and all of that kind of stuff, then you may want to get out of the game or the game is going to have you. And this is how it works. Like, And, and to me, you know, it's so, shit, I just woke up now and I woke up here. You see what I mean? And this is like what I'm dealing with. Like, I'm I'm a person just like everybody else. Like, I came into this. I didn't expect none of this stuff to be going on. But now when I snatch the cover off of something really briefly to see if there is something there, hoping to prove myself wrong so I can go back to my monotonous life, right? I find that there is something really going on. You see what I mean? So the more that I dig I know that game real well. I'd like to prove myself <laughs> wrong right now. But unfortunately, <laughs> mm, boy, it's deep. <laughs> shit yeah okay so here, here's another one now the sea lanes okay and the satellite lanes are the veins of this construct okay so that's why whoever still controls those sea lanes and those satellite lanes remain in control and that's why the military industrial complex does own those lines of current 
So this is why any time that you need to deal with the current, like I need to deal with the external force, it needs to either be bought to you, shipping, cargo, freight. You see, Mayersk, the company that's been delivering the freight since yes, yes, one, yeah. with the big seven-pointed Elvin Saturnalian sign right on the cargo yes. right by me, like, now these are magnets, by the way, meaning that they exceed the level of wealth of anyone who's counting wealth still. So why would they use the star? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like behind the closed doors, you can see everyone is just playing games with themselves because when the general gets up there, he's got that same bird. I saw one of the Iraqi generals or the Iranian generals, right? He gets up there and he's supposed to be anti whatever. And he's got that same old bird, what they mm -hmm. call that hated black bird. He's got that same old pentagram. And he's got that same old regalia yeah. <laughs> that from that same old constellation of Orion. And but still imagining that somehow he's fixed himself into a position that is against that. You see what I mean? And it only, as we know from another level, it just serves that, right? So these affiliations really is what we're looking at. Now, here's another thing. Let me, let me explain to you how much of this came about, like as far as the knowledge of how to deal with wet work. Okay, this is basically how you deal with remote viewing and other advanced levels of remote viewing. Right. Programming okay. from long distance, radio radionics, all this kind of thing, talking to the deceased. This is called church technology. Believe it or not, these people that you see surrounded in the Utah area, right? The whole Dianetics, L. Ron Hubbard, Scientology, et cetera. The reason why they really pushed that whole church movement so much and created those denominations, especially the Baptist and the Pentecostal, was mm -hmm. they were monitoring their progress with the communication of the Holy Ghost. And once they found out that these people could not only get in touch with something else, but also see other places, that was the thing that they were, okay, that's, that's what we need. That's what we need to pursue. So there's, so, and then who, who, when I'm saying they, who I'm talking about is a being that's sitting here too, then starts to realize maybe a thousand years ago that it's stuck. And that if it doesn't figure out how to get out of here, then it will be here forever. And that's the actual being story, okay? So that means that there is no knowledge because there's a thought boundary. There is no knowledge of how to get out. So you need someone that can get out. So the only way you can find those kind of beings is to not even put in their mind that they're stuck. You see, this is called the gift and the curse, because once a person feels like that they're, they're in fear the, the, or they need to protect themselves, now they have fear. If they feel like they need to, they're trapped, now they have to escape. So this is the, the power of words. Remember, abracadabra. To understand what you're dealing with, the being speaks the words and the so words create the reality. Are, are you going at this from the place where this being basically wants to hitch a ride? That it's watching because you you talked about, for instance, connecting it, with the whole not Earth. wanting to hitch a ride. It hitched a ride on our okay. Country. Okay, that's, that's why, where I thought is, you were and, going. And this is why it says the humans are the chariots mm -hmm. of the gods. Mm -hmm. Right? And then <laughs> so this is interesting because when someone thinks about it, the chariot is what's getting rolled on. So it doesn't like someone may hear that, oh, I'm the chariot of the God and think they've inherited some massive position, but you're carrying the God around. But with our imagination, with our energy, with our children, okay, in our children, see, that's organic tech. See, that is really the most valuable thing anyway. It's yeah. not even a game. Yeah. Like you can't stack a child up to an iPhone. And this is why if you take that child through the procession of never introducing doubts to it, Dealing with a one waffle. No doubts, no fear, no installing these these programs that we all grew up with. Exactly. Exactly. And and but I would much rather put my time into something like that than hundreds of years into some open source self-evolving OS. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me explain mm -hmm. what this being also has done. Now, when I'm saying something specific, I'm also talking about something that resides in everyone. It's just a paradox of how this reality works. But it's a self-evolving OS. 
And this is where you can start seeing how, how the computers were created because they're only replicas of things that are already going on on organic yeah. level. What a yeah. self-evolving OS is, is that you learn how to rewrite your program based on your experience. It's what you're doing now. If you burn yourself in the fire, if you if you uh, plug in the wrong cord, whatever you self-replicating AI. Well, it's it's not artificial though. It's it's actually okay. real, but it's self-evolving. So we are all self-evolving beings, but because our data is still tied into a frame, like if there's a mainframe to all the knowledge and all the experiences that we're having. And so whoever has seen, remember, you had access to that mainframe is what I'm telling you. You had access to, they love to call it the Akashic Records or whatever. This is nothing but either the sun or the moon or the other stars and even the ones that you can't see. These are receptacles of data and programs that you can study in order to design even more greater worlds in attempts for your consciousness to experience right but don't get it twisted this is not some people say oh this is a reality that i chose to come no no no, no. that's not the story here that's one of the stories in your concepts of how you invent realities and go and project yourself into them and let me just explain how that works see as a tree you have these seeds Okay, man is very familiar with his seeds but those are the external ones there's internal ones that the man and the woman have and what we do is, is we design our seeds so that they endure. I'm telling you, if I throw a coconut from Venus and it lands into our ocean, it will land intact. And I'm going to say that again. The seed of a coconut is so strong. If I throw it from Venus and it happens to land in our ocean, once it washes ashore, it will then take root and then start to grow a tree. Then when it drops another coconut, it will do the same thing until it spreads out a grid. And then Venus will read this entire planet from those organic satellites that it already has embedded into that new world. Okay? So that's how it works. That, that's why everything has, most things have a seed. Okay? And most of those seeds are very strong so that they can endure the whole cosmic travel to where they're going. So you do the same thing, Randy. You're doing it now. It's just, are your seeds making it into those new worlds? Let me explain this, how this works. When we get ready to pack this thing up, and this is what we knew how to do, so I'm just refreshing everybody's memory. When you, pack, when you start to pack yourself up, you do it several times. You pack yourself up into what you believe to be the strongest configuration of yourself, okay? And then you spray that into another womb. You actually spray it into one of these stars, okay? And then it goes through the star and comes out the other side. And then it attempts to live, okay? Now, this is why they tell you that in some constellations, it's fucking hostile. Like, you can't even live there. This is like the parable of the sower. The moment your seed gets there, it doesn't even make it into the atmosphere before it burns yeah. up, okay? Right. So this is a lot about our consciousness. When we understand how to design our consciousness right, we create this seed that's so strong. It's like that one that you can heat to like seven, 8,000 Kelvin. There's a seed that it could be heated to 7,000, 8,000 Kelvin. They sent it into space because it's 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 a real seed but it's almost impenetrable it's the one that when everything gets all volcanic it's one of the last things to actually survive and then when the volcanic magma settles again then it starts to grow and then it becomes like the root and the mineral base for many of the other trees great yeah so this is the process of, that i just want to explain to people about how we get to other worlds but again to get to a better world you have to keep your imagination open and on top of that you need to realize what where you're at and i'll tell you especially for the males to remember what the female also really is she is a receptacle, but it's on another level. We have to stop seeing the physical version of woman and see like the archetypes. So the archetypes, they say more look like the genitalia. So over on the other side of things, we have the ability on an astral level to make an inception, not a conception. Conception is conceived into the physical world. An inception is conceived into the, or, or birthed into an internal world. So you can make an inception of yourself and send yourself into another womb of the perfect womb. Okay. 
And so that's that's I'm catching I'm catching the picture here. Yeah, yeah, so that, definitely. So that's how it works. And it is a visualization. Remember, the imagination is what is doing this now. That's why it's all higher triangles. See, the higher triangle, everything that we don't like, everything that we have a problem with doesn't exist there. Like so you don't feel like you need. You don't feel like you see, so there's a lot of stuff. It's hard for me to explain now, but just remember in the higher triangle, like you know how there's you have to breathe in. there when you when you feel the energy move into the higher triangle, you'll be sitting there for maybe three or four minutes. And then a thought will come to your mind very briefly, like, oh, are you breathing? Oh yeah, I guess I better take a breath. You don't need to breathe. This is the space that I'm telling you that. See, this is why they're 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 messing with us, Randy, because we don't need anything. Like when we're in the higher triangle, we're supreme beings. Let me tell look at look at how this works. Okay, we got a couple examples, but there's one primary example. Was God needing anyone to help him fucking create the world? Just as that that alone, as we understand that sentence, not the entities involved in whatever. No, it's because you're self-contained. You have your own food. You don't need food. <laughs> you have all the things that you need. You have because you don't actually need anything until you get in the lower triangle. See, the lower triangles are the got it. You're the physical. See, I'm seeing it. I'm okay. seeing it. Yeah. Okay, so that's how it really works. And now yeah. remember, now when you're in this higher triangle, right? Remember, that's also synonymous with going through the stars. It's like above where the stars are, right? Mm -hmm. So on the other side, it looks very similar to what the sun looks like when we're looking at it, right? But the whole area is like that. In that space. You don't find yourself needing anything. In fact, you find yourself being in the other position. You tend to give a lot because you have a lot to give. And this is why they say, oh, he's potent. OK, because see, on the see, this is what people don't understand about the top of the hourglass glass. It never runs out of granules. It's not that all the granules are coming. It's above out. unity. It's oh. basically free energy source. Exactly. It's, it's throwing off. Let, more let, than let, it. let me tell you. Let me tell you where it's getting it. It's <coughs> from our memories you see see how the sun is how these how these star systems have created themselves and that's why they say oh your memories are all in the stars ancestors are in the stars it's because their symbiotic relationship with us is that our experiences they know how to recycle it and then send it back out as energy we need and then we use that energy in, in to have more experiences and we send it back and they send it back this is perpetual energy that's how it's working see because let me tell you why what did I tell you about the higher triangle? The imagination creates the energy. So thoughts are energy. Words are energy, but thoughts are even more powerful. They're another level of communication. So when we have those thoughts and memories and experiences, they contain themselves there and then they spray them back. Now, this is how manifestation works, because when you have a thought or whatever it's about, Whatever it corresponds to, be it positive or negative or a mixture of both, it gets sent them to the receptacle. The receptacle attempts to send it back into the physical reality. But just like seeds, most of them don't make it because the imagination is not strong enough. The person doesn't even really know what they're doing. So thus, there's no spontaneous manifestation. And sometimes there's a prolonged manifestation, like some people get the boards together and the things, but nothing potent. You're not going to slam the TV across the other room with a wave of your hand. But I'm telling you, you can. Now, I don't know what the use of, would be of such things except for the power this raggedy military force that thinks it's going to triumph over everyone. But realistically, think about what I'm saying. It's conceived in the higher triangle through the imagination. Then the most toughest part, let me show you the toughest part. See that what the adept, okay? See the adept can get to the higher triangle, right? But then this is what happens. Either you leave everyone or you try to come back. Okay, now let me show you this. See, when you get in the high triangle, there's no more crying, no more dying. You literally feel it. You don't want to get back into the game. When I was there, I couldn't even visualize myself coming back on the radio and telling anybody anything. <laughs> I was like, I'm done. Yeah, I still yeah, see the game. Yeah. I see the whisper, I see everyone. Mm -hmm. I understand but, that. But then in my mind, my own consciousness said, but see, you'll go farther than they all have gone. You'll set the new bar for where others will go. You're just a catalyst, though. 
just like the cat, the catalyst begins with the cat because the cat was the catalyst to our physical reality. That's the secret of the story. Right. Okay? right. But you'll be the catalyst, the hundredth monkey, if you may. Okay. It will start that syndrome. But how does it work? Because when the higher triangle is in full spin, you can activate the lower triangle. Now, this is strange. Okay. Because see, something was like, and I'm going to give it to you here. There's some Gnosticism in this. But then what was going on, right? I was in the higher triangle, man, and I was seeing these clouds of complex geometry, but nothing like this platonic stuff. Like it was, it was multifaceted. And then what I did there, because you can do things, is I put earth in a sling, like in a, in a blanket kind of, and I started flying it closer to the sun, right? Because they said that that's the only thing that you can really do for your family and for your planet is bring them closer to the sun. And the reason why is because, okay, what happened was is that we went into this cave, okay? And then it was this little bitty plant in the cave. It was a little bitty green plant and it was curved like this in the darkness of a cave. And there was a metaphor there and it said, you see, my light still even penetrates down here. This is called, that's that sub, sub, subatomic or, or what they call that, far infrared, right, light. Mm -hmm. But it's still the sun's light, but it's a whole nother spectrum. It's not bright to us, okay? And they say, so this is how you'll know that never get yourself caught up in this whole save the world program because all will eventually be saved. All will see the light. It's just only a matter of time. And this is why time exists on your dimension, meaning that that sun, which is us, it's awareness, will eventually penetrate every single thing here into a point where it starts seeing the light. And like, oh, okay, I'm awake now. Oh my goodness, what is that big ball in the sky? Hey, maybe that's me. It's a graduation of thought. So this also means that you don't have to be thinking because this is another level where the whisperer will try to get you. You're leaving everybody behind. Oh, you're on another level, you're on another level now. You're going to miss the rapture. If, yeah, if you, jump, if you jump back into duality, you're going to get stuck there. So you might as well stay in the high triangle. See, because what it's yeah. doing now is it's trying to write you off. Like it'd rather see you in a game from that point, not interacting with nobody in reality, not telling anybody about this knowledge that you saw, because that will require you to go back into the lower triangle. So you see what I mean? So if you get into the higher triangle, the general, the general thing that happens, because I did this eight years ago, that first time is I got away from everyone. That's why I live in Costa Rica now. I sold all the, the Mercedes and all the, the company and all the, the, the lofts and all that kind of stuff. And I liquidated it all. And I got myself on a plane. I gave the rest away. And I was in Costa Rica and I felt free. And all of the past was wiped away because nobody even knew where I was. And that's because when I went into the higher triangle, I didn't see any more use for the experiences that I was having there. And it's very easy to make those decisions. See, that's about the high triangle. It has, it's, 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 uh, you're seeing it. And so when seeing is believing, it's not like you just got to go believe in and then something happens. You're now seeing how everything works and you know your entanglement with the reality is what's keeping you from progressing into the higher state. So you give it up with no problem. And that's what I did. And then slowly I started inserting myself back into the lower triangle after I wrote the book, The Code of the Matrix, off of a thought that in order for me to completely progress, I needed to still pass what I knew and what I got in that transmission to everyone else about what was going on with this language. Like I said, how the words were backwards, how that turned the direction of your brain, how you know, all of what I revealed about the language. And I'm telling you, I, was, I did this eight years ago. And for people now, act like when they're basically quoting my words and my book verbatim that they just came up with the stuff is kind of comical, but I'll let them have it. But I'll also tell you this, Randy, there are some other people out here involved in this, what we're calling the spiritual field, that are working with the whisperer. And it's so clear to see when you understand this occult stuff. And, and also, there's still people also hung up on their racial thing. Mm -hmm. their prism, Because you see how when you sign a clear light into a triangle, you get seven colors. Those seven colors are the actual colors, but there's two of them that are missing. This is why the Egyptian system was a nine, not a seven. Those two colors are black and white. Yeah. So then yeah. what you have is, is you have all the races then, yellow man, black man, white man, brown man, you have all the races, and then they're racing in the prism, racing in the prism, trying to see who's trying to get to the top of the pyramid. <laughs>
right? Or more or less, who's going to get to the color that equates to the top of the pyramid? What is that? What's on the far end of the spectrum? It's ultraviolet. It's purple, right? So if you get into ultraviolet and get into purple, that's the energy starts speeding up so fast. You're almost sure. on your way out of here. Or, but if you get into that, and then you go ultraviolet, purple, then white, and then ultraviolet collapses on itself. So that's the conclusion of it. I know I, I up enough time well no actually you did a beautiful job of unpacking massive amounts of concepts here <laughs> and for people who are watching this and may not have done so um your 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 uh, matrix publication I'm, I'm trying to remember you just mentioned it um the book you wrote mm -hmm. um uh, I, I did a mind flip i forgot the yeah the code, the code to the matrix de decoding the matrix yeah. Yeah, that's a must read because that will give you the basic concepts. From there, like I said, you've unpacked a lot of concepts and this is kind of a cliffhanger. And I know you, you're going to begin throwing your seeds out onto the internet, but let people know where they can find you and give them some place they can hang on to with some of these concepts because most people today, they, they, they're on the internet, they're surfing, they're grabbing stuff, they're grabbing it, they're pulling in, and they don't do anything with it. Yeah. But we have to start, and I said this in the first section, segment of the show tonight, we've got to stop being consumers, and we've got to start putting this stuff in practice. Exactly. It's time. I mean, because, you know, uh, most of the stuff, again, is, is still designed to stuff people back in. <laughs> I mean, people need to yeah. realize that it's designed to, you know, if you do come out of the body or you're starting to come out of the body to put you back in. But right. yeah, I mean, uh, it, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting to see the whole thing because it's also where it's not just a reading thing and a learning thing. It's, it's also like we, like you're saying, it's an experiencing thing because you were getting into stuff that, you know, you have to be able to experience where you even believe something like this is even true. Not to mention what kind of justice are you doing yourself by just listening to it? We've just got, we've got into that so much. If you're not willing to. Yeah, it's voyeurism. It, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like be living vicariously through something. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, we, we have this opportunity and, and this is what I want to tell people is, you know, because the conversation it has a lot of things going on in it and there's a lot of things to be a quote unquote concerned about, but how concerned can an immortal really be? And this is the, the real truth of the matter is, is that in, as an immortal being, we just need to come into the realization of our immortality, this life, if that's what we choose to do. Because as far as time running out or us never having opportunity to do this again and all of that kind of stuff, I'm sure we'll figure it out because that's the whole thing with sequentials. They reincarnate themselves on a consistent basis in multiple places. Like I said, you spray your seeds all over the constellation. So that way, if this one doesn't end up figuring it out, the other one that you have somewhere else will have the opportunity to pick up and to continue from there. But I think that now we've collected so much information and knowledge, even from, you know, and not saying that every force is malevolent. In fact, nature happens to be a really good reflection of what the hell's going on. And so if we get into nature, also understanding that the plants have a bioelectricity, so that energy system that these plants, many of these plants are running on are directly symbiotic with the body. And because these plants contain the archives. Okay, that's it. Let me just explain this last thing. So how it's stored here, okay? How the data is stored here is through light. So what, what the tree is, what the, the wood in a tree is, is stored light. And we all know that these trees they take in everything takes in the energy of not only the solar but also the celestial bodies and then coalesce that into a form okay when we distill that form refine that form we then get generally a crystal that's how it works like generally if you take a tree okay because everything has a refined process tobacco it's nicotine uh, acacia it's dmt uh, poppy, it's opium. Uh, uh, or, or I think poppy is cocaine. So what I'm saying is, is that th these are distillations. Okay? And the reason why these sub substances do so much to you is because the light that you've been accumulating has now been taken back and extracted from them. Okay. This is why you get like all this, you get all this plant matter and they call that the toxin. They call that right. the yeah. And then what you're left with is just a few crystals because that's the light. 
And so this is what we're doing with our consciousness is we're actually now getting into a position of distilling and refining our consciousness and then becoming that rather than this big glob of body and all this character and choices and all this stuff that really is made out of, you know, stuff that you know, is just holding things down. So, so that's it. <laughs> It's amazing stuff. Like I said, you've uh, you've opened up a whole lot of things that are food for thought, yeah. and food that I think needs to be digested, and then it probably needs a chaser. So let people know where they can find you. Uh, <laughs> right. So they can. Uh, they actually we're still at resistance2010.com. We have a new site rolling out on the twenty second, uh, which is called secretenergy.com. That's April twenty second. It's going to launch. Um, all the elements that we've discovered along the way uh, that assist in allowing the body to be able to contain the high currency and also uh, to be able to get familiar with the energetics of your body is actually contained at realmdynamics.com. And so those are good sites, resistance2010.com, realmdynamics.com, and then secretenergy.com launching in April 22nd. Uh, also, if you Google AstroQuest Podomatic, you'll get hundreds of recordings of, you know, the preliminary to this information. And, you know, I tend to come on these shows with the potency and I guess I just leave it to the audience to catch up at some point. But I think many of the people that are listeners to this kind of stuff, we just have to face it. Once you start getting into this kind of level of the knowledge, yeah. you're kind of right for this kind of stuff anyway, because it push, puts pieces together for you. And then the truth is, is always going to stand. So if a person starts really thinking about it, you start looking up at that black hole sun, you start realizing that it's a, a black hole is for time travel and that that time travel goes right to the future. And that's the sum up of that. And that's why so many people sing about this, sing about it like that in songs about it being a, a black hole. And if you start staring at it long enough, it actually starts to become a black hole with a ring going around the outside of it. So these are the kind of things that I feel like are necessary for the a person to know. And last but not least, what I'll say is just remember, because there's a point where you start getting into the higher triangle, you feel like you wonder if you're gonna leave this place. And you start thinking about, and this is the reflection, you start looking back. That's why I said lots wife, don't look back. But you start to look back, and then that pulls you back into the lower triangle. And it doesn't mean that you don't need to eventually land, but you gotta take off at some point. And the key to that is is understanding if it's true here. If it is really true, then it'll also be wherever you're going because truth is always present and it'll be in a greater magnitude. So you have nothing to lose. On the other side of this is is big grand party going on and we were just invited to get there, but it's going to take our strength and it won't be by any other leap. That's, that's the other thing realizes that that's how we get out of this is not actually depending on some other entity or something else to actually do it for us we realize that we can do it for ourselves with what we have and then we cease to become dependent we cease to have that old cane that's why they call it a cane yeah 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 wow <laughs> and then we end up staying in the physical reality so that's how it is <laughs> well brother you have uh, as always come on and given us a lot of food for thought and uh you also have done a documentary film is that correct are you gonna yeah uh we're still you know it's a little bit uh incomplete at the moment like we have okay. more scenes to fill in and so you know i'm just seeing what's going to happen with that project you know i would love to to get ready to put out that information but yeah there, i mean there's a facebook page on it it's actually facebook.com forward slash uh dmt document so okay good good kind of put themselves on to that uh like that page or whatever they'll get updates about what's happening with that project excellent excellent we're running out of time here it's a, it's our first show so it was a little rough at the beginning but as <laughs> always it's worth riding it out for the smooth for sure. ending this is off planet tv i'm randy moggins the truth is out there it's inside you namaste <laughs>